Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Fumilayo and this is day three of our 100 days programming challenge. And today I will be talking about while loops. So if you're interested in learning about while loop, subscribe, like, and leave a comment and to the screen. Can you believe it's day three already? Day three. And today we will be talking about while loops. You might be wondering what is while loops. While loops, they allow you to run a block of code repeatedly as long as certain condition is true. So you can say, as long as this person is eight years old, keep running this. As long as this person is two meters tall, keep doing this. And if there is a change in the, as long as in the statement, then the loop stops, then the loops break. So this is the syntax of the while loop you have your while condition. And while this condition is true, this, whatever code you have underneath it would be executed repeatedly. So condition is a Boolean expression that is checked before every iteration. So before the code underneath is run, it has to check the while condition. And if this is true, then the code is executed. And when this becomes false, then the loop stops. So I would be showing you some simple while loops that you can run. So in this example, we want to print out the value of a counter and we want to increase it by one. And if the loop is then, if the counter is then greater than five, we want the loop to stop. So you see, we want to print out the value of counter. So first thing we have to know is the, the starting point of counter. What is counter first before the loop begin? So our counter is one. So our counter is one, and then while while counter it is less than or equal to five. What do we want it to do when counter is less than or equal to five? We want to print a statement. So we'll print counter is and then a comma counter. So you can see what we have done here. We've stated this is our starting point that when counter is one and then our while loop that when counter is less than or equal to five, we want to run this. And then when it gets to a point that counter is greater than uh, greater than five, then it should stop. But we have to like increase. What does do we want our counter to be increased by? We want it to be increased by one. So we'd have counter is plus or plus or equal to what is wrong with my keyboard? Equal to one. So. We're starting from one, and then we would run this and print it out, and then add one to one, that would be two, and then it would continue, continue like this until we get to five, and then it will stop. So if I run this, we'll see. So it started at one first, it went through it. One is not, one is less than five, so then it prints out that the counter is one, and then we add one to it, then the counter then becomes two, and it checks again. The counter two is less than five, obviously, and then it's printed out, and then we add one to it, it goes back up. Now we have, you know this was two before, now we're adding one, so that becomes three, and then it checks again. Three is less than five, and then it prints. We come here, we add one more to it, and then four, and it goes on and on at the, until it gets to five. If I increase this counter to two, let's run this. You see, so we started with one and then we added two to it, it became three, and then added another two and it became five. So this is like a simple while loop. It will continue to run if this condition is true and then it will stop when it's no longer true. So next thing is user input with while loop. So we want to use the while loop to ask a user for input and we would want the loop to continue until we get the response that we want for the particular user. So the first thing is that what do we want to get? We want to get a response. 
and our response is going to be empty, empty string. And then we'll then like, what is the response that we don't want so we can continue to like get it. So while the response is not equal to yes. So if the response is not equal to yes, what does that mean? That means we want our response to be yes for the loop to break. So while the response is not yes, it will continue to run on and on and on. So let's now get the input from the user. So we have input. Again, if you want to learn more about input, that was the programming day two. So you can check that was what we did yesterday. So let's get our input from a user. So it's the text is, do you want to exit? Type yes to exit. And then what do we want to do? We want to print goodbye once the loop breaks. Good. Bye. So now let's run this. See if I enter yes, then that breaks. But if I enter something else like no, it continues. It continues until you type yes, and then it breaks. So the loop will continue to ask the user to type yes, and until they do, if they don't type yes, it continues on and on. But when you finally type yes, then it breaks. So again, you see, it goes, it gets your input, and then it fills up this empty string, and then it checks that is that is that string, is it yes? If it's yes, then it then breaks and prints goodbye. But if it's not yes, then the whole process continues again. The thing we'll talk about is infinite loop would break. Sometimes your loop can run indefinitely, like we have in this user input with while loop, that it kept on running indefinitely until the user typed yes, and then the loop broke. So you have to be careful when you are dealing with infinite loop. Let me show you an example. So while the statement is true, this would continue to run. So then we're getting the input from our users and we want them to enter exit. If they enter exit, we want to exit the program, we want to break it. And then if they don't enter exit, we want to print out their command. So we're doing something like in between the, the infinite loop. So, so let's enter a command. So first, let's enter the right command. We have exit. You see, the loop breaks immediately. We have exit in the program. And then let's run this again and like type the wrong command. You see, we get a message for the command that we entered. So it broke and then we got our print statement. And then we're then asked to enter a command again. And it goes on and on because it is an infinite loop, but with a break. And again, be careful when you're running infinite loop. Next, I'll show you how to do avoid infinite loop. So you see, the while true, it creates an infinite loop. But then using the break statement ensures that the loop stops when the user types exit. You have to avoid infinite loop. It is important to ensure that your while loop has a condition that can become false, or you can use a break statement. Otherwise, the loop would run forever. So let me show you an example. So this is, you have a number. The number is 5. So while the number is greater than 0, you want it to print a number. And then the number is then minus. So we're going to be subtracting 1 from five and we check if it's greater than zero until we get to zero. So when we run this, you see it first starts at five and then we subtract one, it's greater, it's greater than zero until it gets to zero. One minus one is zero and then zero is not greater than zero. And then using a continuous statement, a continuous statement skips the current iteration and then it moves to the next one. So for example, we can add like a continue 
that maybe when it's three, then it skips that three, and then it goes to the next one, which is two. Let me show you how we can do that. So I'll be using a counter that we used earlier. So see, this is our counter. While while counter is greater is less than five, we want to increase the counter by one. But when when the counter then gets to three, we don't want three. We want to skip three and then move to the next one. That's what continue does. Continues lets you skip your current iteration and then it moves to the next one. That is if that current it, the current iteration that you need is not needed. So for now, I do not need three. I don't want three to be in my final result. So it's when it gets when this counter becomes three, it skips and it doesn't print out the counter. So let's see. So see our final result, we have one, we have two, we have four and five. So again, the counter is increased by one, is increased by one, when it's two, it's increased by one. And then when it gets to three, it stops there, it skips it, and then it goes to the next one. So when the counter is equal to three, the continuous statement skips the rest of that loop iteration. So three will not be printed, and then it goes again when it is four. So that's what we'll talk about in while loops. So we have seen a simple while loop, we've used user input, we've seen that infinite loops are not great, they can make your program all responsive. So you can use break, you can use continue to ensure that your loop doesn't run forever. And these are some practice questions that you can try. So try the practice question, put your solution in the comment section. And as usual, this Jupyter notebook would be available in my GitHub link in the description. That's it for this video. Do not forget to like, to subscribe, to share, and to leave a comment. And the link to the notebook that we worked on is available in my GitHub. Link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching this video, and I'll see you tomorrow.